Hi guys, welcome to a quick and easy overview of Photoshop CC 2015. Now in today's tutorial, I'm assuming you've never used Photoshop before. Uh, you stumbled upon my channel and you're like, hey, let's learn some Photoshop. And you might have a photo or two you want to edit, nothing crazy, nothing advanced. Just you want to be able to know your way around Photoshop. So we have an example. Let's say we want to take this photo and you know make the grass a little greener make this guy a little bluer and remove these people in the field just to clean it up some really simple stuff something that will take you minutes if not less time to do and yeah it's really simple so first step we need to open up Photoshop and go over some essential stuff so when you open up Photoshop, you're going to get this dialog box that says welcome. If you're not using Photoshop CC 2015, maybe you know Photoshop CS5, CS6, this dialog box might not pop up. I'm not sure. I haven't used CS6 in a long time, but I think it has something like it. So you can either open a recent file that you've been working on or create something new. After we got rid of the welcome box, this is what Photoshop looks like. There's a couple important things already on the screen. Now if your screen does not look like mine you might want to change it. So it may look like this. Go up. Max my stuff does not look like yours. How do we fix it? Easy. You go to window, workspace, you can click it to essentials which is the default. So it is what you should see when you first open up Photoshop but if not it's okay. So first off in Photoshop you're gonna see this cool toolbar with all these different tools and the most important thing right now on the screen over here is layers. Now Photoshop is layer based software which is a lot of Adobe software is like that and it's extremely helpful. If you've ever used layers before and you understand the concept you will very much enjoy it. So we need to start editing that photo we saw with some cool tools over here. So what we're gonna do is import that photo and a way to open it up in Photoshop really simply is go to file open then find your photo through your browser, which it's right here, and then click open. Voila, it is now inside of Photoshop. Now, another way to do that is click simply open up a browser, a, a finder, whatever you use to source your files, and you can simply drag the photo into Photoshop. Also works. And yeah, even another way to do that is open up your finder and simply drag the file into the Photoshop icon that also works so we found out three different ways to open up a file pretty darn cool now first off a layer has appeared inside of our panel it is the background layer which is this now we need to understand what is going on here so layer one is the background so I could start editing this photo and changing things but it would all be housed inside of one layer and be one flat image. We don't want that to happen. So for instance, on your toolbar, there is a tool called the brush. If we click the brush, we can essentially just paint onto the document. So with the brush selected, we can see right down here that our color of the brush is red. To change that color, you can click on this color and actually pick a new one. You can put it in a hex code, a RGB value, whatever you need and change it. So we're going to keep it red and paint. Cool. We're painting on our picture. Alright, so this stroke is too small. Let's make this stroke a little bigger. A quick way to do that with your brush tool selected is right up here. This little dot says little circle says 39. Our brush is currently 39 pixels. We click on this on the drop down and increase the size. There are shortcuts to do this, but it's good to know where to do it it's good to know how to do it the long way first so like this our brush can be a lot bigger and now we can paint on our photo awesome so we've painted on our photo but a big problem with painting on photos like this is that it is housed in a single flat layer also known as the background it is now a part of the picture it is not separate so if you were to try and erase this paint it would literally just erase the background as well which is no good so we will undo all of these actions by holding option command Z undo 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 cool 
we are going to paint on a new layer. So what we'll do is in your layer panel, go down, click new layer, and now paint inside of this new layer. Click on your brush, shortcut B. Imagine making a collage and painting on the top layer of the collage and the bottom is your photo. Now if we go to erase on this layer it doesn't erase the photo. It just erases that layer. Super simple. Very very powerful. Option command Z to back the erase up. Option command Z to get rid of this. So if we paint on a photo and because it's on a different layer we can actually grab this tool called the move tool the pointer tool selection tool whatever you want and actually grab this layer and move it around now we can move stuff around inside of Photoshop so we're gonna undo that action and undo our paint option command Z now we have our paint that we just got rid of now we're gonna put some text on here so quick tool to do some text is the T for text tool and you can click and you can type hello and if you've watched any of my other tutorials you'll find out my favorite font is Babis New I'll put a link in the description I use it all the freaking time so let's make this font a little bigger so highlight it these two T's right here you can either type in a font size you want let's say I don't know Ooh, 120 it's bigger or you can drop down and pick font size or you can just hover over the T right here and actually click and drag it to be bigger then you can click the selection tool oh well, in Photoshop it's called the move tool you can also hold V for a shortcut and move it around and do that and move text around inside of Photoshop really simple and these purple lines you might see popping up are the align so it tells me it's in the center so quickly on this font if we click the text icon and click on this again we can you know highlight it change it we can go in here and actually change the font right here it's set to baby's new we can change it to something else um, highlight it to change it make it regular you know thin bold we can do left aligned center aligned or right aligned we can change the font color right here make it nice and blue we can actually give it a a warp effect this little arc and a T you can um, arc it you just play with these pretty neat cool so that essentially is the text tool there's more advanced options right here where you can open this up it's your character tab and change all the character of font which if you've used word before you should understand what that means cool that is quickly adding font inside of Photoshop so we will delete this we can either just click on this layer and delete it or drag it down to the trash can whichever you prefer so we've went over our paintbrush our eraser and the selection tool next up is this tool it's called the rectangular marquee tool now I call it a selection thing it's fine what you can do with this is actually select pieces of your images like this and I don't know you can grab them and move them um, it's just a selection tool so what I did was I selected these objects I click the pointer tool to move them and remember what we're doing right now where it's all housed inside of this flat layer oh, that's a no-no um, and then to unselect it I went to deselect so that's also known as command D so deselect unselected it we will use this tool later to edit some of these people away but right now we're just going to continue on so this is also a selection tool it is a polygon lasso tool so same thing except the first one we were drawing out rectangles this does the exact same thing but you can actually draw out the selection and then double click to finish it same thing it's just no longer a square so command D to deselect 
Next one is the magic wand. Same thing about selection, but it selects colors. So right now, the tolerance is set to 15, so on 15 samples it will select the color. So it selected all this blue. If we turn the tolerance up to, I don't know, 50, it will select even more blue. And now if we grab the sky, we can move it. Essentially, the sky has just been erased because we selected it with the magic wand. Cool. Select, deselect. Quick overview of that tool. Next one is crop. Now we can crop this image to something like this. Crop it down. You can change the width and height of your crop. You can uh, do a square, original ratio, square for Instagram. Pretty cool. Once you're happy with your selection, you click check mark and it's been cropped. So undo that. Cool. Next is the eyedropper tool. So if you like a specific color inside of your photo, click the eyedropper tool on that color. You can see it is red right now and it's going to change it to that blue. See our color went from red to blue. Cool. So the next tool I'm going to show you is the spot healing brush tool also known as J. So with this tool you could easily just paint over these guys and it will remove them. Really really simple. Now there is a ton of ways to remove people in Photoshop. This is just another tool that will do it for you. There's also some drop downs inside of this so if you click and hold on this there's other tools inside of it but I mean I'm just gonna go over the top layer right now the other ones are a little more advanced but not that much more you can play with them if you want to but I'm gonna continue on so we've already went over our brush tool in the very beginning um, we painted now we're painting blue because we set it to blue with our eyedropper tool um, next is the stamp tool which is kinda like the spot healing brush but does a lot of the same things but it's the clone stamp. So command plus to zoom in on your keyboard, command minus to zoom out. We will take the stamp tool and actually, if you hold option, it has this little thing that pops up. See there's option off, option on, and you click. And what it's going to do is take the pixels from that point you clicked and paint over something. So we're grabbing the pixels from right here in the grass and we're actually painting over these people. So that worked pretty well. It got rid of them. That is a cool way to get rid of people in the grass. Just like the spot healing. So if you paint over them, the spot healing gets rid of them and then the stamp tool does it well too. Next tool is the history brush. We might skip this one for now. It's not that important. I mean, it's obviously important, but not essential to what we're doing. Eraser, we went over that. Um, the next one is the paint bucket. So if you have a color selected, let's for instance go back to red, it's very obvious, and you click on something, the paint bucket fills in those pixels with a tolerance of 32. So the higher the tolerance, The higher the tolerance, let's say for 100 for example, it will fill up everything. The lower the tolerance, let's do one, it'll fill up the closest thing to it. It's the paint bucket. Next is, is the blur tool. So what this will do will actually blur your image. And if we paint over it, we can see that it's getting blurry. Very simple. Inside of this is another cool tool, the smudge tool. If we paint with the smudge tool, it smudges the image. And the next tool is the dodge tool. And what that does is apparently just brightens things up. I don't use it very often, but I probably should. Burn tool darkens it. Pretty cool. Then we have the pen tool. Quickly, we can click and draw out a shape with the pen tool. Pretty neat. I'm not going to go too crazy with it because the pen tool deserves a whole tutorial on its own. Very powerful stuff. We've went over the text tool. 
This is your path selection tool. If we had a path, we could select it. Your ellipse tool, which basically, if you hold down on this button, a bunch of different tools will pop up. So the custom shape tool, line tool, polygon tool, rectangle tool, we'll go through polygon tool, and we can actually drag out a polygon. Um, and other, you know, Adobe programs, you just click up or down on the keyboard to change the sides. And this tool, you actually have to go up here on the effector of the tool and actually change the side. So we'll do three and draw a polygon out and it'll make it a triangle. Really simple, nothing crazy. Um, and with every single tool, there's always gonna be the properties at the top. Feel free to play around with them. Next tool is the hand tool, also known as H. So if you're zoomed in on your document, you can use the hand tool to move around. Really, really awesome tool. Next is the zoom tool. So we just zoomed in via Command Plus, but this will also zoom in even more like this. Command minus to zoom out. But the actual um, eyeglass, or the, what is this? The zoom tool, magnifying glass, that's what I wanted to call it. Um, if you click, it'll zoom in to where you click, which is actually pretty helpful. While the Command minus and plus just generally zooms in to what you're hovering over. Okay, so that was a quick overview of the tools. Not crazy in depth, but hopefully it gives you a general understanding of what they do. Um, now, with the tools we just learned, we need to get rid of these people. So what we're going to do is zoom in and just use different tools to do different things. So for this group of people, I think the spot healing brush will do a great job of removing them paint over them they're gone now these people might be a little different so we're gonna use the hand tool H to move over use the spot healing brush and see how it does oh not as good it seems to not be able to figure out how to get rid of them so haha oh that wasn't too bad not terrible so but there's a better way than a spot brush to do this. So I would use the stamp tool. Another tool we went over quickly to get rid of these guys. So right now the stamp brush is really big. You see the circle is kind of large. Up at the top, take the brush size, make it a little bit smaller. I don't know, 38 seems just fine. And what we'll do is hold Option, click on this point right here. It's going to copy the pixels of this shadow. As you can see, it's being moved around. And we are going to align this shadow to this shadow and paint over these guys. So click, 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 and actually finish it right here. Click. Cool. Then we'll use option, click, and paint over the bottom of these guys. Now if we zoom out, success. They've been deleted. Now, hand tool, move over, Let's check these guys out. So, another way to remove somebody is to simply select them like this. And when your background is locked like it is now, if you hit delete on your keyboard, a box will pop up and say content aware. And you click OK. And it has deleted them. And picked out the pixels are surrounding it to remove them. So delete, OK, select, deselect. It actually doesn't look half bad. This shadow is a little misaligned, but if we zoom out, you can't really tell. So that was essentially really good. So if we undo that action, put them back, we realize content aware really works quickly. Let's actually do it with the stamp tool because I think it's a little more accurate to get rid of these guys. So I'm stamping these guys out. I want to get rid of their faces up here. Get rid of their bikes. Oop, this person, let's get the leaves to cover them up. This car has been duplicated. So we're going to grab this right here. Get rid of the car in the background because it's there. It's small, but I just want to remove it. And the bike pedals, we will use the um, spot healing brush and actually paint over. 
Oh, and right now, grab this. Actually, make it a little fuzzy on the leaves right here. Right here. Cool. Now zoom out. That is perfect. Cool. Looks great. Hand tool, move over. Let's remove this group of people. Let's see if Content Aware can do it for us. Delete. Content Aware, okay. <gasps> very good. Very, very good. Okay, so grab the Stamp tool. Actually, select, deselect, remove this box. Stamp tool, grab this. We're going to move this down, this line down a little bit. Grab this. Now zoom out. gnarly looks good now we got this fellow up here walking he's really far up there so use the stamp tool to option click grab some pixels right here oh too much too much and then to make the brush size a little smaller grab some pixels and remove this guy grab these pixels remove this guy he's been deleted we are almost removed we've almost removed every person from this photo Zoom into these people. These might be a little more complicated, but not that much more. So grab your stamp tool. Obviously, you can tell I prefer the stamp tool for this kind of stuff. But content aware and everything else definitely works. Um, let's see. Let's grab this tree. Actually, use that to remove them. Grab this bush. Use that to remove them. Grab whatever this is. Use that. And grab some grass. Actually make the brush size a little smaller. Grab this. Grab this. Grab the tree trunk. Grab a different part of the tree trunk to blend it. Grab this part of the tree trunk to get rid of this. Grab this to get rid of this. Grab this to get rid of the bottom of this. Grab this to put it in back in here. Now we'll grab these pixels down here to just quickly paint over the bike. Grab this hard line pixels to go and fix the bottom. So if we zoom out, Every person has been removed. Sweet. Now we did it on a background, so it's a flat image. That's okay. If we file, save as, file, save as, grassy field, save. It's set as a JPEG because that's what the file was. You can save it as a Photoshop file right here. Also, this is just how you change the file formats. Click Save. Then this pops up. Quality 11, maximum. File size large. Move this down, makes your file size smaller. Move it up, makes your file size larger, but better quality. Click OK. Now, if we actually drag in our old photo, because we just saved a new one, you can see there's a new layer. Click check mark. The new layer, that's the old photo. This is the new one. Old, new, old, new, old, new, old, new. Cool. So we have really edited this photo a lot. It looks a lot better. Now we just need to brighten up the colors. So what we're going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, and in your adjustments you have all these different settings you can do to fix things and whatnot. So what we're going to do is click Brightness and Contrast and just go through these. Your brightness can go up or down. Let's make it a little brighter. Bring the contrast up a little bit. Click OK. Image adjustments. The levels quickly. Um, there's presets inside of levels when it pops up. You can make it darker, increase contrast. Darker, whatnot. Um, this little tick right here is turning the preview on so you can see what you're doing. I actually like it this off, so we're going to keep it off so cancel image adjustments curves so your curves are pretty neat it's just like line you can play with D down here is playing with the shadows up here is playing with the highlights and you can actually grab this and make it a little darker bring the highlights out a little bit and yeah but 
curves is another tool that deserves a whole tutorial on its own. So we're going to kind of leave this one alone. But it is good to know that it exists. So um, image adjustments, exposure, very similar to brightness and contrast, but another good way to brighten up your photo. So we can bring the exposure up a little bit, just a tiny bit. Click OK, but it will brighten up your photo, essentially is what it does. Click OK. Image adjustments, the vibrance. Very similar to saturation, but it is very different at the same time. If you bring the vibrance up, your colors will start to pop. As you can see, your vibrance, we can see we brought it up a little bit. On, off, the greens are a little greener. The sky's a little bluer. Click OK. Next, image adjustments. Hue and saturation. Obviously, you could do command U. It would get there, but we're going through image adjustments to get there. So hue, saturation. This box pops up. So initially, we can increase the saturation a little bit. Change the hue a little bit. And it's looking like a really crazy green field right now. Um, the lightness gives it a little filtery look. Cool. Click OK. Hue and saturation. Image adjustments. Black and white. Obviously, it's pretty self-explanatory. It will make your photo black and white. And you can play with the different values inside of this that turn black and white. So the greens, brighter, darker, brighter, darker on the greens. Um, click cancel it's fine it will change your photo black and white is what I'm trying to say adjustments mo image adjustments photo filter this one's pretty neat as soon as we turned it on it turned a little bit orange you can see um, it's because it's the warming filter there's plenty of different ones we can do the magenta filter if we would like turn it on a little bit of purple you can turn the density up to make it more purple or essentially more purple you can actually change the color of this to like maybe a blue. It does that. But I think you get the picture. All right, cancel that. Image adjustments channel mixer. So we can mix the channels. Okay, next image adjustments. We will skip color lookup because it's not that important today. But the next one is invert. Um, command I for a shortcut. It will invert your photo. So command I, invert, back and forth. Really cool. Next, image adjustments, posturize. That is what posturize does. It breaks down the complexity of the photo. So 2, 10, 26, 44. Cool. Get it? Image adjustments, the threshold. Threshold does this to your photo. You can change the value of it with this. Basically, it's just now a black and white, strictly black and white photo. So white and black only. And you can change the intensity of it. Next is the gradient map. You can change it in here. I mean, I could explain what's happening, but I think you can kind of tell. If you do a gradient map, it's going to look like this. <laughs> oh, I'm lazy. <laughs> image adjustments selective color cool so what we're gonna do is actually make the greens greener with this so what we're gonna do is drop down on the greens and actually change them play with the settings until you find something you like this green is pretty we're only affecting the greens right now because we changed it to green cyan Ooh, up is good. Cool. Now we can go to blues. Actually, I think cyans are better because this is kind of cyan. So bring the cyan up. Not much is changing. Oh, it is. Look over there. You can click OK. This looks good. Image adjustments. Shadows and highlights. Basically, this will edit the shadows and highlights. You can bring the shadows out a little bit actually not going to change those the highlights you can actually make them look crazy or not so we're going to cancel this don't need to change those image adjustments HDR toning we'll flatten the document do you want to proceed yes and it does this to the photo so 
you can really play with some neat settings and get that very clarity look. You see it a lot on Instagram, especially with like weightlifters and stuff, making their muscles look crazy. But yeah, it'll do this to your photo. Bring out all the crazy looking detail. So cancel, that looked awesome. Image adjustments, desaturate, and it desaturates. What do you know? Image adjustments, match color, replace color, equalize. These aren't that important, but maybe you can want to play with it. See, nothing much going on there. So, um, yeah, that was a quick overview of Photoshop. Um, hopefully, what I went over helps you out a little bit with some of the tools and what they do and quickly editing photos in the adjustments panel. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do stuff. Um, but I could sit here all day and go through each tool individually, but in my later tutorials, I'll go into, you know, through teaching and creating something new or just generally making stuff. We will learn about other tools, other features, better ways to do things. But I think in today's tutorial, just taking a photo that looked like this, um, with the people and the dull grass and the dull blue sky and making it look like this is really cool so I hope you enjoyed this please like and subscribe if you did I have other tutorials not just Photoshop Illustrator Premiere After Effects and other ones with other unique software coming out so thanks guys and until next time